If only the land could speak, or the rivers, or the sea. What stories we would hear coming out of the past. Exciting stories of adventure, love, and warfare. If the land could speak, would we listen? Could we learn from the past and find something that would so move and inspire us here and now? We have heard of trails that track the heritage of a people, their traditional culture and way of life. We take such a journey through Jamaica now, exploring historical buildings and sites of great interest and add value to us as a people. We reclaim these places in our history and where possible restore the physical beauty and the pride of place they once possessed in our culture. The land, the waters, the houses and the people are speaking and these are our heritage tales. Listen. Can you hear the clash of metal? Do you see pirate ships going out from the harbor to capture Spanish treasure from passing fleets? Maybe you're hearing the different languages being spoken from the numbers of people of African and European descent. No? Well, don't be disturbed. You're not experiencing all of that because we're about 400 years late. Still, all is not lost. The stories remain. Yes, Bluefields. This fishing village in Westmoreland was once a major harbor, perhaps second only to Port Royal. Ships sailing in convoy to England and elsewhere would rendezvous right here in Bluefields Bay. In fact, it was from this very Bluefields Bay that the well-known buccaneer Henry Morgan sailed in December 1670 to sack the city of Panama. They say Jamaica has more churches per square mile than in any other country in the world. So clearly, every community has one. What better place to start than right here in the St. Thomas Anglican Church in Bluefields? Here, we're going to let the church itself tell a story. We're going to take you right back in time to when this church was just starting out. As you can see, the Foxton crew is setting up around me. They are getting ready to work their magic and reclaim the past glory of this beautiful wooden floor. Why don't we leave them for a while to work and then come back when they are finished to see and hear the floor speak for itself. In the meantime, let's go and hear what stories Bluefields residents can tell of their community. Bluefields for me is the most beautiful place on earth. And um, it has a lot of its history intact. You find where the maritime history, in terms of the plantation history, a lot of it is still intact. And um, one of the things that we're here doing, we're doing everything that we can to preserve that history and to share that history. So whenever persons, local or international, come to the community, the history of the community will continue to share. But what of the name Bluefields? What's the story behind that? Well, it was named after a Dutch privateer, Abraham Blauvelt, who sailed under a Swedish commission. Back in those days, different governments would authorize private ship owners to attack and capture enemy ships. So, the bay became the base of operations for the Dutch privateer Abraham Blauvelt in 1644. It became known as Blauvelt's Bay. Under British rule, that is after 1655, this became Bluefields Bay and eventually Bluefields. Let's take a walk around Bluefields and see what stories, what tales come to us. Mm -hmm. Well, it's for them. The land are dealing, take them out and carry them, go, go work, carry them back in the evening and lock them up in the air. And then now have the burial ground down there where friends buried there and their relatives and everything. And I come now and me I keep it clean, look after it. So I get used to the them in there, <laughs> you see, day and night.
The building in the background is what is left of the old tavern. One can imagine Morgan sitting in a tavern like this one, with his lieutenants plotting and planning their trip. Can you see it? I certainly can. It, it has a strong history because Henry Morgan actually had a property in Bluefields, a house where he would come. And that is why on his trip to Panama, he stopped in Bluefields here, where he fitted out his ships and so on, put, got water and wood and what have you, because he was familiar with the place. Pimento, pimento, pimento. The pimento tree is indigenous to the Caribbean. The early Spanish explorers who found it growing in Jamaica were quite impressed with the taste and aroma of the berries and the leaves. Jamaica has the longest history of producing pimento and has been in continuous production since the tree was identified about the year 1509. Bluefields is big on pimento. Let's hear the tale of pimento in Bluefields. This is an old story, as pimento oil is being produced the original way that it's been done for centuries. 